right, we're back for another another little problem video from for problems from section 3.3. This one might be a little bit longer. Um, I've got two problems here on long division and one on synthetic division. Um, so, uh, just because these ones are a little longer, this might be a longer one. We'll see. Uh, the first one is a long division problem. And it says divide using long division and declare whether d of x is a factor of p of x or not. So sort of big picture idea here. How do we know if something is a factor of something else? Well, if, for example, you take like a number 64, and you divide it by something else, if you get a whole number, there's no remainder, is that thing we divided by a factor? Yes, it is. But if you say take 64 and you divide it by something else, say like, I don't know, 7, do you get a whole number? No, you don't. You get 9, right? 7 times 9 is 63. And there's one left. So we get something left over, don't we? So is 7 a factor of 64? No, it's not. So how are we going to decide if this polynomial d of x is a factor of the other polynomial p of x? Well, we're going to know. Um, we're going to know by whether or not we get a remainder. So let's get started. d of x, our divisor is x squared plus 4. And our other polynomial is 2x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 9x squared. And I told you in class, it pays dividends <laughs> to put in these extra terms if you don't have them yet included. So there's no x's there, and there's no x to the first. So I'm just going to add those in. In this problem, it does not make a big difference because they're not, they're not in between others. So it's not going to make a huge deal, but you just want to get in the habit of doing that. OK? So let's go forth. Let's do this. When we do a problem like this, what we repeatedly ask ourselves is, what do we multiply this leading term by to get the next available term? So the first available term is 2x to the fourth. So what do we multiply x squared by? Well, we multiply it by 2 to get the 2. And to make the powers of x agree, we multiply by x squared. Okay, so if what we have is 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth. That's what we want. Okay. So now that we know that, we can multiply this 2x squared out by the x squared plus 4, and we're going to write that down here below. So we get 2x to the fourth. We know that for sure, because that's, that's how we picked 2x squared. And then 2x squared times 4 gives us 8x squared. That's over here. Right? I'm not writing anything underneath the x cubed, because there's nothing there. There's no x's in this divisor. So now what we do is we subtract. There's a plus sign in here. So we subtract. We see what we get. So there's obviously nothing here negative x cubed minus, there's no other x cubes, so that's just negative x cubed. 9x squared minus 8x squared is x squared. So there we have that. We bring down the next available term, which is nothing, but we can, we can still do that. Okay, keep that in red because there's nothing there. 
Um, now we ask ourselves, what do I multiply the leading term here by to get me the next available term, this one? It's negative to give us the negative sign, and it's x to make the powers of x agree. x times x squared is x cubed. Negative x times x squared is negative x cubed. Now that we've got that, we multiply this negative x by x squared plus 4, which gives us negative x cubed by design. That's why we chose negative x and minus 4x, which I'm going to write here because there's no x squareds. Then I subtract like a normal long division. We get 0, we get x squared because there's x squared minus nothing, and then we get 4x. Okay, ask ourselves the same question. What do we multiply x squared by to get x squared? That's right, 1. Okay, and then we multiply through x squared plus 4. So there's no x's there, it's just plus 4. And I forgot to bring down the next available term to help us with this. Bring down that 0. There we go. So um, we've got x squared plus 4 here. We subtract with the right color. We don't want to subtract with red. And we see what we get. We get 0, we get 4x, and we get minus 4. OK. Are we done? Well, yes. And the reason we're done is because the degree of this is 1. And the degree of this is 2. As soon as you arrive at something like this, something, some polynomial of degree less than this, you're done. This is the remainder. So what we do then is we say plus 4x, uh, 4x minus 4 over x squared plus 4. And that's it. So, to answer the question fully, um, divide and declare whether d of x is a factor of p of x or not. So we've done the division. We, we find that the fraction, what you would write in that blank, is right here. And is it a factor? No, because we have a remainder. We did the division and we determined there was leftover stuff at the end. Okay, so that's it for that problem. Let me see here. All right, so for the next one, uh, we've got use synthetic division to find the quotient. Is the divisor a factor of f? Same question, uh, different. Different, uh, different polynomials. So what we've got here is it's important to note this for synthetic vision this divisor needs to be a line. It cannot be something like the previous question a quadratic. It has to be a line. Okay. So I've got this right where we need it now. I'm going to just write this down. x cubed minus x squared plus x plus 5. Okay. Now I can scroll down. We're dividing by x plus 1. So for synthetic division, again, you can do this if you're dividing by a line, which we are in this case. And the way you do this is you, you focus only on the coefficients. So here we've got the polynomial we are dividing. So we've got the coefficients of 1, negative 1, 1, and 5. Now this is another this is another thing to to add here. This is a nice polynomial. Powers are three, two, one, zero. If you're missing anything, you need to add a zero in. 
right? For every term that's missing, for every power that is missing, uh, for every power of x that's missing in your decreasing sequence there, you need to add a zero. Fortunately, we're not missing any, so this is straightforward. Okay, then your book, I had to look this up again. Again, I used to do this with a big thing like this, and I used to write numbers in here and below it. Your book does it with a small one. That's fine. Just outside of it, what do you put? You put the zero of the divisor. So x plus one is our divisor. So we need to find the zero of this, which is easy. We put that here, it's negative one. And then we proceed with this synthetic process, the synthetic division process. Uh, the first step is the easiest step. We just take the first coefficient, we drop it down. The next thing we do is we take negative one, and we multiply it by that one. And the result we put right here. So we've got negative one times one, which is negative one. Then we just add, we just add this column, so we get negative two. Then we multiply negative one times negative two to give us two. Then we add this column to get three. Then we multiply negative one by three to get negative three, and we add this column to get two and we're done. <laughs> it's, that, it's that fast. Um, what does this mean? Well, remember that when you divide by a line, every term has its power reduced by one. And that these coefficients are for the new powers. So here we go. This means that we've got one x squared we are subtracting two x's. We are adding three x to the zeros. So just x to the zero is just one, right? And then we've got two left over. This is the remainder, okay? So this means we've got a plus two over x plus one. So when you're doing synthetic division, these numbers are not your final answer. <laughs> this is your final answer. Okay, you need to you need to recast these numbers as a polynomial with some remainder rational expression. Okay? It's not too difficult, but it it is an extra step. Alright? So again, this process is really easy. You find the zero of your divisor, you put that out here. You write the coefficients of your polynomial in a row like this. Then you add a column, and then you multiply the sum of that column by your zero, and you place the zero here, and then you repeat. You add the column to get this, you multiply it by your zero to get this. You add the column, you multiply the sum by your zero to get this. You add a column, and when there's no columns left, that final sum is your remainder. And that's it. That's it for section 3.3. 3. Um, there's no section 3.6 on the test. I was just getting ahead of myself, just writing section after section after section. Uh, right. Sorry, <laughs> but I hope that helps. I'll see you in the next one.